We're here at KubaCon 2018 in Seattle, Washington, and I'm here meeting with uh, Chef, who's going to tell us a little bit about the company and what you're doing here at KubaCon. Yeah, absolutely. So Chef is an automation company, and we have a number of automation products, the first one of which is the company was named after, and that's Chef, obviously. That's the one that people know us the best for. But why are we here at a Kubernetes conference? You know, Kubernetes is a much different way of working using containers instead of virtual machines. So what is the relevance of a company like Chef uh, you know, in a world where Kubernetes is, is kind of the hot thing? Well, you know, one of the challenges of having a company that's kind of named after your initial product is that as you develop additional products that people people only remember you for the thing that made you famous, right? right? And in the number of years since we've developed Chef, we've had a couple of other areas in which we've made investments. And one of those was in security compliance. And when you think about, well just look at last week, there was a Kubernetes vulnerability um, in the actual API server. And when you think about issues like that, how do you detect those things and then how do you actually go about and remediate them? Not only for Kubernetes itself, but for all of your other workloads, your hybrid cloud workloads, your on-premise and things like that. So we've got an investment in that space. Open source technology is called InSpec um, and we have commercial products around that as well. And then in terms of, if you think about where the industry is going and who is making buying decisions and technology choices today, the way that we've, what we've observed over the last few years is that increasingly it's the application developer and application teams that are making these decisions, as opposed to perhaps 10 years ago, where it was sort of a central IT group that made those decisions and said, you will use WebSphere and here's what it's going to look like. So now when you have a lot more application teams actually uh, dictating and driving the choices, the technological choices that are being made, then what the, the, the issues that they have in terms of understanding uh, what they need to use, and especially like infrastructure and things like that, is what Chef can bring to bear in terms of some of the automation capabilities. And that's where the other, the third product line of Chef's uh, really comes into play, and that's Habitat, which is really about portable application delivery at scale to a number of different environments, Kubernetes being one of them. Because what we recognized early on is, yes, Kubernetes and containers are very, very powerful technology, but it's unlikely that anybody is going to be, hey, everything in my world is going to standardize on Kubernetes. There are very few companies that are going to do that. Um, if you just look at the history of technology, every company owns a little bit of everything, a little VM, a little mainframe even, it's going to be a little container, a little serverless. And in order, to, in order to actually manage that estate and get it moving quickly um, at the speed of business, they need some kind of portable application technology, packaging technology that will help them do that. And that's what Habitat does. So hopefully that's a, that's a pretty quick introduction about why Chef is here, why it's important, why the space is important to us. Um, so what specific problems uh, does Chef solve for Kubernetes? Sure. So Kubernetes is a really powerful platform. And if you think of it as the way we look at it is, look, it's in a cloud native era, it's workload placement across a cluster, a, a cluster that could be distributed to a lot of different regions and a lot of different areas, right? With all kinds of characteristics about each of those deployments. Now the thing is, like, it's still very early days for Kubernetes. So of course, it's the first, you know, I think this is KubeCon number three or number four. And, you know, the, when, when these new technologies come along, especially containers and, and, and disruptive technologies, often they're started by very, very smart engineers that aren't necessarily the ones that are going to penetrate and, and um, be addressed in the enterprise in terms of what the enterprise actually needs in order to, to deliver applications at scale to their customers. And so you often see that the technology has a huge amount of potential, but the interfaces are not necessarily application developer centric. The way I like to think about it is, you know, today, People say, especially application developers, say that Kubernetes is very hard to use. And what they mean is, look, if you're an Angular developer or a Ruby on Rails developer or something like that, and you have to use and you have to understand a whole bunch of YAML and write all this stuff and understand all the concepts of Kubernetes in order to deploy that application um, to, to an environment so that they can, you can show a value to the business, then you're kind of doing it wrong. And that's sort of where you know, the ease of use aspects of Kubernetes are not quite there yet, specifically for the persona of the application developer. And that's what we're trying to bring to bear uh, in this whole world. Um, where would you say the industry is going over the next 12 months, you know, into 2019 and beyond? Well, there's a couple of different dimensions to that. I think one is absolutely trying to adopt you know, doubling down on adopting cloud, and particularly multi-cloud. I think the days, you know, the early days, Chef has been around for a long time as a company that grew up in the, in the cloud era. And at that time, obviously, uh, Amazon was the leader, and 
at, at that time, a lot of analysts were saying, you know, everybody's going to be all in on AWS, and, and cloud migration basically means AWS migration. And some of the patterns that we're seeing now are customers really uh, using a number of different clouds for a variety of different business reasons. For example, you know, Google perhaps you know, they, they believe Google and TensorFlow and things like that have stronger ML capabilities, so they'll put some workloads over there. They like some features of AWS, maybe they like you know ECS or some of the container uh, implementations, and they'll put some of their workloads over there. So I think. Uh, continuing adoption of the cloud, but in a multi-cloud way that really leads to and requires portability is something that we're going to see through 2019. And then the other aspect of it is, I think security and compliance are going to be an enormous uh, factor in 2019, particularly from a political situation. If you think about what's going on um, through 2018 and the continuing undercurrent, not only of security breaches, but also uh, overall compliance activities um, around whether companies are actually uh, have good business practices uh, for their infrastructure, um, particularly with the breaches that are happening, um, I think is going to start having a political dimension to this. And regulators, I think, are going to start to step in to, for example, in Europe, start making an example of companies that are breaching, that, that have major security breaches, like some of the ones that have been in the news recently. And it's also going to, I believe, impair uh, force US regulators to really step in. So as not to be embarrassed by, you know, why is it the EU that's suing American companies to get security and privacy, right? American constituents, for example, are going to look to their governments and say, you need to enact regulations to protect us. So I think it's going to be a really hot button topic, security and compliance specifically in 2019. I think it's also going to then lead into, if you think about it, 2020, there's going to be a presidential election. I think it's going to be a, be a factor in the in the platform of, of whoever becomes the presidential candidate, um, no matter which party. Could even be both of those candidates. Great. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to speak with VM Blog, and uh, we hope you have a great rest of the show. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much.